What is in my ass? <laughs> <laughs> A lot of people have been asking about how we got our start. It's kind of a weird story. It's not your standard food story. So sit back, grab a beer or a whole shitload of beer, <laughs> and get ready to hear wine. where Brothers Green came from. So like most children, we came from our mother and our father. And unlike most people that like to cook, our parents were not good cooks. In fact, my mom, no offense mom, was such a bad cook that we hated her food. And we were also probably just being little bitches, but we did not like my mom's food. And she's like, you know what, I've had it. I've had it there, shit. I would say 90% of Jewish kids growing up, they have a mother, they have, hopefully they have a mother who has six dishes in her arsenal and she yeah. throws out those dishes once a week and you're getting the same lineup for maybe 10 years straight of your life with a little bit of mix yeah, up. And if you say like, if you're like, oh, these are really good, then like the next six days straight, you're eating whatever that thing was. Rice and fucking yeah. so, chicken. So my mom one day, you know, she was fed up with us not liking her food, and she said, I've had it with that shit. <laughs> you don't like it, you make it yourself. And I said, you know what, mom? Maybe I will. So I just started cooking all the time, and Mike also was starting to get into cooking, and we were being weird. We were cooking with a forming grill. I remember trying to cook everything on that damn thing. I was cooking rice, did not work. I was cooking chicken, I was making cheesesteaks, I was making eggs and all kinds of stuff. And through that, you know, we just started to get more and more experimental with food and we would cook for friends. It didn't really start getting serious until I came to New York. I moved here with my band. I was broke as hell, I had no money, and I had to figure out ways to eat cheap and to survive. For someone like me that like really likes food and you're surrounded in this food mega culture, everyone's eating out, the fanciest restaurants and this and that, I was like, you know what, fuck that. I'm just gonna cook and learn how to cook. And I would go to the restaurant and I would see the food and I'd be like, that looks good. You know what, I'm not gonna buy it. I'm not gonna spend my money on you. I'm gonna go home and make it. Wait, so you'd be like, can I just see your food? Yeah, I'd be like, that's oh, that pretty looks, good. Yeah. What is it? You know, I go in there and be like, can I try that? Yeah. Bag it off a little bit. I'm not gonna actually buy it. I just wanna see it. So I started inviting friends over, all my broke ass musicians, we'd play music, we'd all hang out, and I would cook, you know, and slowly and slowly people were like, you know, this food's pretty good. First, not so much, a lot of people were like, nah. but eventually food started to get good, to the point where people trusted me, and I would make weird shit like pesto ice cream, and my friends would come over and be like, holy, this is pesto ice cream, like what is going on, this is amazing. So through that process, I started a blog, and I started experimenting on myself, and doing a lot of weird stuff, and while this was happening, you know, I had just, uh, I had a job before, I was a, a private investigator, anyway, it's a whole other long story. I lost a job and I needed, you know, money to survive. So while I was cooking for friends and trying to figure out things, slowly people were like, hey, we like what you're doing, you know, uh, can you cook a meal for me? Or like, will you deliver me weekly healthy lunches? Or will you teach me cooking classes? Or will you help me throw this party, you cook the food and you know, I'll pay you per person? Because we don't want to go out to restaurants, there's too many of us. So I started doing that and it was going really well, but with the band it was hard to juggle. And around that point, Mike was still in college and he was cooking. And he said to me, he said, you know, I- Why I don't I tell him what I said to you? Oh, no, no, you tell me. <laughs> By the way, I'm three years younger than Josh, if you don't know, you probably don't know that. So I was in college and I had been cooking for friends. Learning how to cook for friends is probably the best way to actually learn how to cook in general, especially drunk friends. It's the easiest way. You know, you make them a homemade dinner. No one's getting, everyone's eating Subway, Quiznos, Cadoba. You make them something homemade. It really doesn't matter how shitty it is, how good it is, they're gonna appreciate it. So cooking for friends in college is a great way to learn how to cook for people in general. So I was learning, I was actually studying architecture. You know, I was into architecture, but food just grabbed me. Something about it, something about just creating things from scratch, eating it, creating it again. It was just more simple, it was more fun. I was cooking for friends, they were enjoying it, I was enjoying it, and at that point I was like, you know what, fuck this. I want to do this for a while. So once I decided that, I kind of took it into second gear. And I just started cooking for my friends. Probably twice a week, I'd invite five friends over and I would cook them, you know, a nice restaurant-style meal. 
um, played it up all nice for them and I didn't charge them because no one's gonna pay for shit in college there's alcohol to be bought and bars to go to so I did it for free I did it out of my pocket and they really appreciated you know having a home-cooked meal and I really appreciated cooking for them I was learning and I, I was throwing events on weekends every now and then and sometimes I'd invite 20 people over and cook little hors d'oeuvres just like this meatballs dumplings easy stuff yeah, people would freak out too I went up once and like for me it was normal but you know you when you go to college and you see like you know, seared ahi tuna and you know, risotto with like shiitake mushrooms. These kids are like, what the hell is going and on? And I, I remember I was spending, a, you know, a good amount of money. All, all the money I had, I was spending on these meals cooking for people. And my mom was like, what the hell are you doing? You're spending all your money, maybe a little bit of their money, yeah, on, their money yeah. on uh, cooking for my friends. And I was like, don't worry, I'm learning. I'm put, you got to put in the investment if you want it to go somewhere. So I was really just putting in time and money, pretty much forgetting about school at that time. Yes, I still passed. I still made it through. But, <laughs> but cooking was my true passion, yeah, and that's what I was focused on. Around the time I was getting into food, he called me up and he's like, listen, Josh, I like the architecture thing, but food to me is like, that is it. And I was like, well listen, that's great, but don't just go and tell mom and dad. Don't just drop that bomb on them. I did it already. One son is enough. I told them I was going to be a musician, and they freaked out. They're like, no, don't do it. Like, you can do anything else. They're like, you're a marketing major. You want to be marketing. It's going to be so good. I was like, no, I'm doing it. I don't care what you say. It's going to be Fuck great. Fuck you, mom and yeah. dad. And they're like, you know, you can do it at night and blah, 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 whatever. So I was like, Mike, just don't do that. I was like, what you should do, go home. Just go home this summer and just start cooking for them. Start cooking for them every meal. Like, I'll make dinner for you. I'll make a lunch. Whatever it is, just start cooking for them all the time. And in that process, I guarantee naturally it's just going to start becoming obvious. So Mike went home and he started cooking. That's exactly you know? what I did. And said, so, yeah, I'm not going to drop a bomb on them. I'm, I'm in school for architecture. You don't want to just be like, you know what? Screw $80,000 of school. To, I'm going to go cook. I started cooking for my dad every single night. Every single goddamn night. And he, you know, he, he noticed I had some skill. And slowly towards the end of the summer, I was like, yeah, Dad, so I really enjoy this cooking thing, you know? I'm thinking about making it a career. And, you know, he, he agreed with me. He saw that I really enjoyed it. He saw that I was confident in it. And he supported me. And my mom supported me as well. Uh, and so what was happening at that point, it was getting so busy with me, and I was doing a lot of shows with the band and practicing at night. But all of the jobs and things we were doing were at night. So I was like, Mike, listen, just move up to New York. You can skip the whole, like, wash dishes and suck some chef's dick to like get up to like you know the top of the ranks you can just completely skip that whole thing just come and cook with me you know I need help it'll be great so Mike moved up and we were here and we just started cooking and before we knew it, we were getting all these jobs and people heard about us and they're like you guys are great you cook literally whatever we want and we, we started doing this thing where it's like listen you tell us how much money you have and we'll make it work for you we'll teach you how to cook We'll help you with a party, whatever you need. Like, we're just food people that love food, and we want to help you with all of your food needs. So while that was happening, we had a friend move in, and he had just graduated from NYU with a film degree, and he was really into making documentaries and things like that. Um, but he was looking for something new, and he just really started filming us. And we started just hanging out, and we would cook, and we'd hang out on the roof, and we'd film, and we tried to do the instructional cooking thing, and it was just kind of weird at first, because everyone was doing that, and it just didn't feel right. So we just were like cooking and hanging out and filming it and cutting it up and Mike and I did this video where uh, we were parodying Dexter and I strapped Mike to the table. This table and You can right watch here. it, you can, you can go online and you can watch it. Uh, just watch Brothers Green Dexter parody. What and you don't know about that video <laughs> is at the end when Josh, Josh had an immersion blender and we were faking a kill scene, this fucker turns off the safety and zips my chest. And when I say zips my chest, I mean put a hole in my chest with an immersion blender. I'm strapped to the table in plastic wrap, spewing out blood like it's actually Dexter. All of a sudden, we're reliving the true Dexter scene. Spewing out blood, I can't move because I'm stuck in plastic. Yeah, let me out of here, remember. Let me out of here. Stop. I was like, Adam's filming the entire thing. Everyone's freaking out. They cut me out. And yes, I had a little bit of a hole in my chest. Ten stitches later. Ten stitches later, we had our first video. Still so, have a scar. But, you'll, 
have to show you that later. Put the video out, and um, we started having this rivalry. You know, it was like the brother rivalry, and Mike, you know, and I would do cooking, we'd competitions against each other, and we'd invite friends over, and we'd like make a bunch of dishes, and friends would judge. And through this, uh, someone named Rachel Ray, she's this Who's cook. That? Uh, oh, she's this cook on uh, Food Network or some some channel like that. Um, she Someone heard about, about us. Quick meals. Quick, you know, <laughs> thirty-second meals. Um, she heard about us and she's like, "You guys are great. Are you kidding me? Like, we're looking for rival brothers, but we have this special episode. Where we're gonna have two brothers come on and cook, and there's gonna be a secret celebrity judge. So Mike and I go on there and we make these turkey burger things, and it turns out Nick Jonas, who's another brother who is a musician and likes food, was judging us, um, and we battled and. One of us won, and then, but the cool thing was they gave us a thousand dollars to buy a guitar, and so I now have a guitar named Ray Ray, and thank you, Rachel, for that. I mean, I have a guitar, yes, I won, and we I have, have a guitar. guitar. Yeah, we're okay. He won, he cheated, but he won. Uh, for the guy who cheated. You can go watch that video online, too, if you search for Brothers Green, Rachel Ray. Um, so that kind of elevated us into some sort of mainstream cooking world where you're doing this weird thing with a filmmaker on the side, on the internet, and all of a sudden we're on, you know, national television. Being weird, staring Rachel down. <laughs> so people are contacting us, they want to do a show, they know, you know, we, we have a brother rivalry, we have something going on, I don't know, we, apparently we know how to cook something. Or semi-good looking. <laughs> <laughs> One of us. So, so, um, you know, we have production companies that want to do a show, and for a while, nothing really seemed right. You know, we could we could have went on Bravo and done one of those stupid reality shows that you know we would have had <laughs> reality. <laughs> we we ended up going with a show called Hungry, which was considered the new Food Network on YouTube, which was funded by the new Google. What, what would you call yeah. it? Well, they came to us, they were like, listen guys, YouTube is making all these new channels and they're gonna be paying people to put on shows and we are trying to get the food show. We'd love to have you guys, you're hipster, Brooklyn, you're cool, this and that, and the other thing. Like, all right, cool. So they got the channel and we did it. In the first season, they brought on this big production company and they were all people from the Food Network that left because they wanted to do something new. And it was a really cool experience, but it was also a little bit weird because here you have Brothers Green that don't know how to do an instructional cooking show, that just want to hang out and have a good time, and they're kind of forcing us into that. So it created this sort of weird vibe because we didn't check really out feel season one. You can you can you can get a feeling for for the yeah. discomfort in the room. We were actually working with a producer that was on Martha Stewart. Yeah, Bobby and she knew Flay. what she she knew. She's good. She's good. She's good. But if you go to BrothersGreen.com season one, you'll see there's a very big difference between season one and season two and three, which after season one was over, you know, we did really well and they're like, listen, people, people love this show, you guys are great, but we can tell that you want to do your own thing. So we're going to give you the production, you guys produce the show, you hire everyone to film the show, you edit it, you do your thing, you give it to us, done. And this, this was a dream to us, we're like, this is incredible, we've never produced a show before, but we were totally ready for the challenge. And we did it, and we worked on Midnight Munchies, you know. And they, they wanted us to do a show, like kind of a late night, you know, stoner, whatever, kind of cooking show. And Pretty good really, at that. They really had fun, like working that realm. That food's, you know, dear to our heart. Um, but over the year with Hungry, you know, some things happen. And if you still are subscribed to Hungry, you'll see that there aren't any actual shows aside from the how-to videos. Um, we really appreciate everything they did for us, but su suffice it to say, you know, there are no more cooking shows on Hungry anymore. Um, we made it very far towards the end, but now we're doing our own thing, and you know, we get to express whatever we want, and we get to connect to you guys, and listen to you, and go videos week by week by week by week, which we love. Um, and we're here now. We're here, right here, right now. It's like that scene some, from Spaceballs. What the hell am I looking at? Is this, is this now or then? You're looking at now, sir. <laughs> what do you mean now? Everything that was happening now is happening now. What do you mean? <laughs> what happened to that? We passed it. When? <laughs> Just now. Please keep writing in. We love all your responses. We want to help you guys out. We always wanted a show that we could enjoy in college. That was one thing. We grew up on the Food Network, which was fantastic. But come on, you know, when you're Bobby Flay cooking on his nice goddamn grill, it's got levers and stuff, you don't have that stuff in college. You don't have fancy gadgets. 
And that was one thing we could not relate to. We wanted something, you know, that we could truly grasp onto. When we were in college, we had just dorm kitchens, not too many appliances, not too many ingredients, not too much money. Very little money. Very, still very little money. Barely any, <laughs> just enough to just basically barely survive. Um, but we do these videos because we want to connect to you guys. And like Mike said, we want to know what you want to cook. We appreciate all the responses. We're not necessarily going to be able to get to everything always, but keep writing in, keep letting us know what you want. Yeah. You know, when you watch most cooking channels, you know, they have, they put a lot of production and a lot of time. They make some really beautiful stuff. But if you always notice, it always turns out perfect. If you watch Mike and I show, you'll realize that things don't always turn out <laughs> perfect. That's because we're not perfect. And most people that cook out there aren't perfect. And if you cook based on perfection, you know, maybe you'll get things looking really good, but it also causes a lot of stress because everything has to be just right. And if something goes wrong, you're screwed. But we want to show you just how to flow. Cooking and music are very similar. You know, they have a flow, they have an arc to them. You know, you're cooking something, it burns a little bit, you mix it up, or you add too much of this, you add some of that. And that to us is like how we like to cook. We go with the flow, we're not professionally trained. We love what we do, we put a lot of love into the food and that is what's important. I don't care how many stars of Michelin your <laughs> amazing restaurant has and how many people you have working under you and how many people eat your food. If there's not love going into it, then I don't want to eat it, you know? And that's why we like to cook and we hope you guys enjoy cooking too and you know stick around stick around we want to grow with you guys tell your friends about our channel you know we want to keep doing this for a while and we love all you guys every one of you every single one and the more that we grow together the bigger our channel will get and the more we'll spread the truth that there are a lot of people out there that don't have fancy kitchens and that don't have a lot of money but they still love cooking and want to be creative and have fun because cooking when you connect to it it will change your life you'll start eating better food you'll start saving money you'll start feeling better you'll start creating better relationships there's nothing bad about getting into food it only makes your life better and who doesn't want you have to do it you have to live life feed better yourself. life yeah i mean you get to have a better life you get to feel better who doesn't want that i know i do so stick with us guys it's gonna be a fun journey keep writing in this guy's drinking teriyaki sauce. Teriyaki. <laughs> and we'll see you later. We got a whole slew of videos coming to you very, very, very soon. Hell's a slew. Good night. Good munchies. <laughs> <laughs> and good food. <laughs>